Howdy lovelies. How are you all doing? Welcome back to our crafting where we learn, grow and craft together. Today we are going to look at more tags. Yes, you guessed it, more tags. Tags are so very versatile and it can be used in so many different ways. And after today we will have another session using tags in yet another way. Why am I focused on tags so much? Because there is really, like I said, it's very versatile and we can use it in so many different ways in our journals. So after today's session, there will be another one where I want to show you a few more trips and maybe tricks on doing tags. Today we are going to look at texture paste. We are going to work with stencils on our tags and we are also going to do some embossing, um, heat embossing. So we're going to use embossing powder and we're going to heat that up with a heating gun. Now, it's all easy. It's not too difficult, but I want to show you this because I want to, I'm thinking about it, not saying we will, want to use some texture paste when we are decorating our journal cover, which is soon approaching. So let me get this away from here because the light is reflecting on it. Just hang on a little bit. There we go. So I'm using the Distress Texture Paste, which is opaque. You also get it in translucent, which is um, not transparent. It's translucent. You can see through what is underneath. Now, I've got two stencils here that I have used previously. I just want to show you um, how to add these things to your tags. So I'm going to grab just a few tags just from this side. Um, we've got some that are coffee stained the other day. I have cut this one down. If you can remember, I made it shorter. Um, so I'm thinking maybe I should use that one. And let's see what else. Plain ones? No, let's leave that down. Let's do a plain one. Let's do a plain one. I love these big tags. They are absolutely amazing. So um, maybe a tiny one or two. Um, maybe one of those that we had previously put some ink on and maybe a plain one. We can always use this so, so, so much. So let's look at that. I think that is enough for now. Now it's very easy to, to actually go ahead. I'm going to work on my cutting mat um, because it's easy to clean. Once it's dry, it will be a whole lot more difficult to actually clean your cutting mat. So if you have a problem with that, you can use your silicone mat, you can use some protective covering that you want, probably something plastic so that um, it's easy to clean, or you can use the old packaging material. Now let's get started. I will do this one. No, let's do that one first. Going to just add it as it is on here. You can <laughs> tack it down with some tape if you want to. I'm not going to do that. Um, you can open up your jar. You can see I have used mine before. And I just take it with a spatula. And we can just put this on. Now make sure you see your tag shining through. If there are some points standing up, you can just smooth it out. Just scrape it right over. I want to cover this whole whole tag with this. Just make sure you don't move it. And I'm just scraping it across, making sure I get it evenly distributed. I don't want any of this texture paste to go back into my pot. And we just keep on applying this till we are satisfied. If you really want really good texture, you can put a little bit more. I find this is ample enough. It doesn't have to be too thick. So there we go. Now, just make sure that once you've put or you're done with your, um, your texture paste, that you lift this up very slowly. You don't want to smash all your hard work and you can immediately clean your stencil or you can just throw it into a little tub of water, which I will just put down here. Now put a bit of dish soap in there. Um, just want to put that in so that it, it doesn't get hard because once it's dry, you will not get it off your stencil. So please be careful. Now I will put this one side. I do not dry my heat, I'm um, sorry, dry my heat. I don't dry my 
texture based with a heat gun. I normally let it dry by itself, so naturally, and I just put that to one side. Then I want to go ahead with this one. This one has got two different areas. It's one of those mixed media and stamp sets. So I just want to add that little bit and then I will get some more out of there. And you don't have to, to add everywhere. Just lift it up carefully if you want to get more texture paste out. Hold it in place and again, just scrape here and there to your heart's desire and whatever effect it is that you want to achieve. Now, I don't want to cover all the the nice grunge that we have added with a coffee. So I will just put here and there, maybe a little bit there, up there in the corner as well. There we go. Just a bit there. Maybe one more here at the bottom. Again, you can tack it down with some low tack tape. That won't rip your, neither your stencil nor your, your tack. I just want to show you, you can literally wipe that off. You can use it again little bit I will not put the extra back into my pot let's do this one a little bit there I like that texture so I will move this one down and just add a little bit there and maybe here as well now this is not colored or anything so you can do so much with it it will dry white because this is the opaque one so there we go I will just scrape the sides not to waste that and there we have. If it buckles like that, it's not an issue. Remember, paper does not have any memory. And we can just mold it back into shape afterwards. So for this one, let me just move this up so you can see. I just want to turn this a little bit. And maybe I will have to grab another tag as well. Sorry, there is a, a large truck going by in the street. Pardon for that noise in your ears. There we go. We will see what we, we come up with there. Now, we still have some on the spatula, which I do not want to get rid of. And like I said earlier, I will definitely not put it back into my jar. So I'll just grab another tag. And I didn't get another stencil out. I actually do have some here to my left. But this is perfect. It's not an issue. This I'll just... Continue adding and have a lot. It can be the background, whole background. It really is not an issue. You can decide how much or how little you want. Again, you can see it actually sticks there. Just pull it down and into the water. You can wipe it down immediately with a baby wipe if you so wish, which is what I will do with my spatula. Just wipe it down and I can show you it is clean. Just a simple baby wipe. There we go. It's water soluble when it is still wet, but the minute that it's dry, it is a whole different ball game, and that will be stuck on your stencil. Now, I just want to rinse this slightly because there's not a lot of water in this little container, just so that I do not have some of that stain on my stencil. If you want to see, I can pull this out. The top one is sort of clean. Just want to get the excess water off and I can just rinse, oh, rinse it, sorry, wipe it just to dry it. There we go. This part, there's some white. You can see the soap in there. And there we have it. It's clean. Not dry, but it is clean. So I'll leave this one. Just make sure everything is rinsed off there just so that I can have it in the little container. And then I will move this out of the way and I will show you what it looks like when it is dry. It does take a little bit of time, depending on where you are staying. If you are in a hot, dry climate, like where I'm staying, Slabam in the middle of the desert, then it is really quickly, though it is still supposedly winter. Temperatures have really um, gone up in the last couple of days already from winter for us, like six degrees in the morning, it has reached 33 degrees Celsius this afternoon. So yes, temperature is definitely 
busy rising, steadily going higher and higher. Now, this is what our tags look like at this stage. It's not yet dry, so we will be leaving this for a while. There is that one. If you have pieces that's standing up on the side, you can wipe that down if you so wish, or you can leave it there. This one, I just want to show you this one, and I'll bring it closer to the camera. This one, you can see, because we had the oxide inks, the distress oxides, that we use the water um, technique, the, the flicking water flicking technique on, it does color. What does that tell us? That the texture based is water based. Water based in the sense that you can clean with water, but it also reacts with the inks. And that's why you get these color blotches coming through. It doesn't bother me. It just um, accentuates the grunge. So I will be adding more color to that and this is not a problem that those colors are then seeping through into the texture paste. With the coffee um, dye tags that we had done a few sessions back, you can see it is showing through, but it does not react with the texture paste. Now, this is not dry. It's starting to dry up. I can get some of it off with my fingernail. Can you see? I took some off there. Um, and it can dry while well, it is still, this is almost dry, the part that I now took off. But that part will be loosely lying on top. It will not attach itself. The other parts will dry in time. So I will really just put it to one side so that it can dry properly. This one that we started off with is really, truly a beautiful stencil. So much that you can do with it. And <laughs> I just love this one. If you can see, I'll tilt it so that you can see. Oh, I never changed the light. I am so sorry. There we go. Maybe now you can see the effect of this with the proper lighting. So let's just move this out of the way so that we can have those dry in peace. We will come back to those in a little while. A tiny little while. So... I have some that I've done previously, just so that I can speed up the process. These dried overnight, it's more or less the same thing. Now with this one, if I can just grab that one again, you will see this one is clear white texture based. This one has got a slight discoloration there. Because I used my stencil before and I did not clean it with them distress inks, it was stained. Um, and some of the ink residue was lying on top of the stencil. And once I used it, it then reacted with the texture paste. Now, this is dry. I can bend this and it doesn't crack or anything. So it's really very pliable. And if your tag, like this one, you can see it is slightly bending. We can remold it afterwards and it will be perfect. Now, I bend it a little bit too much there, but it will flatten out. You can put a heavy object on it face down either way. It will be perfect. So there we go. Let's put that one to one side. Now, what can we do with this? We can simply, this one also shows the discoloration where it actually reacted with the distress oxide inks. And I added the texture paste on top. Now, this is the distress range from Ranger to Holtz, but you can use any texture paste. You can, in fact, also use your own. You can make your own. I will link the recipe that I often use for especially my mixed media projects I will link that below it's my own I have <laughs> sometimes I have enough talcum powder or baby powder other times I might not have enough and I then grab some bicarb and mix that in but I'll give you the recipe in a little while if you find there's any hard parts on the edge that's bothering you you can simply just pinch it off with the nail and just refine that area or you can use like an emery board or a distress tool just to get rid of that so i want to use some rusty hinge which is distress ink and i'm just going to add that i want a bit of warmth in here again i'm not worried about ink on my cutting board as i can actually wipe this off easily so i'm just going to add some distress ink here and there, just getting some warmth in there. I want some distress oxide in antique linen. Just a little bit of a lighter color 
but to get the texture paste inked up and have a color, not stark white. You can see it's not as white as it was before. I will just color the rest of that in so that it is uniform. Then I want to add a little bit of distress stain, also in antique linen. And that can run where it wants to run. And you will see that it's going onto the rusty hinge, which is fine by me. I just want to give a splotch there. There we go. And let's see what happens with that. So it runs. You can see that. Now I want to add a little bit of vintage photo. Not where it's wet. Just on this side maybe. And there we go. Then we have a few different color values there. I like this. And of course, I always want the ends distressed. So I add the vintage photo to the end. That one can dry. I'll just put it to one side before we start with the decorating of it. But I wanted to get the background sorted. So there is the one. The one tag is done. You see, it comes off on the baby wipe. So easy to clean. You don't want any of the colors to go onto any of your other tags. There, I can feel there's a bit of texture paste on the back of this tag. I must have touched it to something else, but you can scratch that off. And there we have it. Dry as a bone, so it can, can be scratched off. Let's carry on with this one. This surface is a bit damp still, but there we go. So this one already has some discoloration. And if you remember it with the first session when we were doing the tags, I showed you that we didn't use any purple, but this shows up as a little bit of purple, which is the magic of the Distress Oxide inks. Absolutely a awesome product to use. I really, truly fell in love with it. And yes, just want to state again, this is not a bait promotion or anything. I just love using these project products. It's absolutely amazing for my projects. For this one, I want to add a little bit of tea dye. A little bit of tea dye, which is also a bit of orange. I might add some wild honey as well, because we have this yellow in there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that, which is coloring that part. I like the effect of it. Let's add a little bit at the bottom here as well. Just that deepened color. And there we have it. I like that a lot. Now we'll put the tea dye ink to one side and I want to grab, I think, the wild honey. Wild honey. Mm, that's really orangey. Let's dry, start with the dried marigold, which is like this apricot color almost. So I'm going to add that in there, maybe a little bit there. Let's see what's happening. It goes a bit darker. Goes a bit darker. Let me just get another ink blending tool. I thought I had some close by, which I don't. So I'll just use this little finger dauber so that we don't have this total discoloration going on of the other ink blending tool. So I want a little bit of orange in there and we will add some there. There we go, I like that. Now, let's don't get this confused. There we go, dried marigold. Then some wild honey. And as you can see, it's absolutely a wonderful color. And it goes so well with this vintagey look. So I just want to add some here on this area. And maybe if I can add some in this corner up here just to have that extra bit there. We can maybe do some stamping there. I like what I see already. This is absolutely amazing. Maybe a little bit of the rusty hinge just to get that. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. I love the color saturation. It is uh, 
amazing. Right. Now, also the same thing, vintage photo, right around. Yes, I'll do it now because I will let this dry as we go on to the next tag. And then we can just grab some little labels or some ephemera to actually add to the tag. Maybe some background stamping here and there. And there we have that wonderful texture with all that amazing color. And yes, it's still wet. Remember pigment ink, the Distress Oxides are pigment based. So it does take a bit longer to dry. And that's where that shininess is coming from. But not long from now, it will be completely dry. So for this one, I think I might not use it for the mushroom journal. Again, whatever is on the edge, we can just scratch that off. You can use your bone folder just to get that part off. Anything there that's bothering you will come off easily um, because that will truly have an impact on your tools if you have to glide it across. It will definitely damage the, the sponge. So there we go. Let's see. I want some dark color here. I do want some, not too much because I don't want to lose the coffee stains, but I do want to have a little bit of a darker color there. There we go. That is vintage. So I want to just Maybe add a smear of that there. And I'll close that one and move to Walnut Stain, which is even darker. And then I'm going to also add a bit of, of Walnut Stain. I mean, sorry, Ground Espresso. This is Walnut Stain. Like so. Now, I just want to see... There we go. I just want to wipe here and there just a little bit. Get some of that off. Just with a baby wipe, it took some of the color off. And now some ground espresso, which is really, truly dark. And a bit there. And then I'm going to go straight ahead and do the edges with the ground espresso. I want that dark color to frame the tag and then so show that coffee blotches on the tag. Why am I doing this now? Because right now I still don't know what I want to add on my tag. There's space to stamp if I want to, lots of space to add tags and um, little labels and pieces of ephemera. So the opportunities is still um, open to such a big array of possibilities. So this one can also dry. I just want to give it a quick pen so that it can flatten out. And then let's move to this beautiful one with the flowers that is already discolored because of my stencil that was dirty. But with this one, I want to use... I think a little bit of this Distress Wild Honey. I love this color so much. And then we can maybe bring in some browns. So let's see. And let me just get this one. Because I want to get, this is just some packaging material that I have taped together. That I often use. So I want the sides also colored. And I'm going to go for the orange sides and then we will bring in some browns. Now, normally we don't start on the tag because we will get all these marks. This, however, is distress ink. I mean to say distress oxide, and it is a whole different ball game. So let's add a little bit more oxide there. Wild honey, which is this orangey yellow color. Now you can see there are tones where I have applied another layer on top. It goes more orange where it's just one layer. It is yellow. So it's very versatile as well. You can see that the texture paste is causing havoc on the little 
dauber you can see that it is looking a little bit crazy right now but <laughs> it is texture based so i could have maybe mixed this with water and get it to run and all of that but it was absolutely my choice to just add it with with the dauber right i will stop there with that color and now i want to go ahead and add a little bit of rusty hinge some rusty hinge that will oh i had used this in my oxides earlier and now there's a bit on my stamp pad and i want to get a bit there just so there we go so we've got this total color going on here orange yellow yellow orange which is absolutely amazing now a bit of vintage photo before we go ahead and decorate our tags now there you can see with the distress ink i put the ink blending tool directly onto the tag and you can see the yellow so what we should do with distress is tap it on the side so that we can blend the ink onto the tag then it is a whole lot smoother than just putting it directly onto our tag i just want to blend a little bit in here there we go so it's not so clear so we've got a whole lot of color variants going on there some walnut stain to end this off which is a bit darker than the vintage photo so it will really blend in well it gives this autumn feel all that's missing is a bit of red there to make it perfect and a tiny bit of green tiny bit of green sorry i just dropped <laughs> the tag and the ends there we go now you can go ahead and just ink the side too then you do not have to glue any other color paper down or anything of that sort you can go ahead stamp an image at the back do some lines or you can glue down paper scrubber paper some digi kits so we will see how we will decorate this in a minute so it is now time to decorate our tags these tags are dry there's still a little bit of ink that's not dry but once you add whatever you decide to add to your tags it can dry in peace and it will be perfect now as you can see i did acquire a few more of tim holtz's um, field notes and i've got the snippets as well which are the really tiny 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 ones um, but of course there's butterflies there's botanicals there's some tags in those packs some stands um there are little bugs insects um, which will perfectly or work perfectly for an entomology type like journal um anything vintagey there really are truly quite a few awesome um ephemera pieces in there that you can use um, of course i love the butterflies the botanicals the little tags and so forth now there are some bigger pieces in there i wanted to show you like these butterflies and and some of these um things mushrooms i just ink this up and i use it as journal cards when they're this big now it can be a pocket if you want to you can glue it down you can use it as the cover of a mini journal there's so much that you can do with these but they are absolutely amazing to add to a journal so i will just put that to one side let's see what we want to do i just want to grab the little tray in the basket with the little tiny number tray um trace listen to me number trace the number labels um again could be from tracy fox it could also be from dg and svg designs for you both of them are on etsy and i support both those etsy shops love the labels absolutely exquisite work such good quality again this is not a pay promotion it's what i like to use so let's see i've got some some extra little scrappy birds labels tags let's get a big one here i like that one immediately so what i want to do is i want to get my glue stick 
and this is the amazing part now you can use any type like look quick glue if you want but i'm going to just prove to you that this also glues down with a glue stick i just want to get enough on this little navel and now i can't tell you whether this is tracy's or svg designs for you um svg dg and svg designs for you if it's this or not but there it is i think that one is perfect on there so we can add another type like label maybe something oval i however do want to go ahead and just get a bit of a background stamping going so i'll go for these little dots just add a little bit more grunge you know me i love the grunge and then where is that other beautiful one from the other set I've used it so many times. Of course, this is going to just enhance that grungy look even more. And just the other side. Again, I'm not using a stamp block as I want the freedom to bend the stamp and just use part of it. If you put it on a block, it is too rigid and you will probably have marks all over your workspace and you cannot use whichever part you want to use. I also want to go ahead and just add a little bit of another layer there and maybe something there. I can also add some on this. It never grows old. To me this never grows old. I just want to show you where I have added the ink on there, that distress stain in antique linen. It was wet and it run down. Look at that beautiful layer or dimension that it added there. So, and one more from the other side there, where it is all white, cream, basically, with the antique linen. And maybe one there. Awesomeness. So, for this one, I can add another bit there. There we go. I just love it. Absolutely love it. I just don't know why was I whispering in this very moment. Please forgive me. Sometimes I forget that I am on camera. And I need to just express myself a little bit clearer. So, clear stamp from the sick right next to me. I also have the stamp set there, but let's use the clear stamp. Just add a little layer. We can also add it there. It works perfectly well on our tags. And if we don't use it for today by adding mushrooms, I can adjust it for any vintage theme and it will always be a good, good match. Now let's see where we can put that. I don't want to close too much off of our grunge and texture. Neither do I want to close or cover too much of our colors. And there we have it. That is really blending in well with the browns in here. I just want to show you once it is dry, you can't, it does move the color a little bit and you can wipe a little bit off there to just show a little bit more of that orangey color coming through there. All right, I want to decide what I want to add. I think this one will be perfect, but let's look for something. Oh, there's a butterfly. Look at that. Oh, there's more than one butterfly coming through. That would be perfect. The, the contrast would be absolutely amazing on this card. There are truly so many beautiful ephemera pieces in the Field Notes set. There's another one that I missed earlier. We can maybe add that one, and I think that is perfect. I just need a little label. And I don't want to cover all of that. I want to show some of that. So that one goes there. And I need a little label for here. So let's see what I can find that is small enough. I think this one should be fine. All right. I'm going to add this one down there. And then one of the tags will be done. I really honestly truly want to show you heat embossing as well. 
Just show some of that grunge. Still have some leeway with a glue stick. Just burnish a little, little bit so that it can really truly stick well. And if you're not sure where you want it, I want that extra bit of time to make sure I've placed it where I am completely satisfied with it. So let's see. Let's see where we will put this one. I want to show a part of that. And there we go. Bob's my uncle. And we can burnish it with a nail. Or you can use your bone folder just to get it to stick down properly. And there is one tag done. You can, I have got some tea stained muslin that I will just thread through there and pull that part through. It's now sticking to my fingers and we can pull that. We want that roughness so we can stay there. We can actually add a bit of glue just to get that to stay where we want it to stay, which will be there. So that can dry just like that. I love that feel. And there we have one tag done. Just an extra bit of texture with all of this interest, picking up the browns, but also the pages. A little bit of contrast with the green there on top of that label. And of course, that dark brown also picks up the dark brown in the tag itself. With that texture, picking up that brown. So there's one tag done and dusted. So let's continue with this one. I truly love now this one. We can add that one or we can add some stamped images. So I think that's what we will do. Grabbing a, a well-loved stamp, just adding it to the block. We, there's now a piece of that muslin on there, which is not a problem. It will just add to the beauty of it. So I do want to add a stamp to the side. Now just remember, because there's a lot of texture, it might not be as perfect as it would have been when it was a flat surface. Now, just to show more interest, I want to add the stamped image before adding that single mushroom ephemera piece. Let's do it here. Now, it probably would have been better if I just added it without the stamping block. But let's see how this will look when we are done. Just make sure you give it some good pressure. And remember, it's a raised surface, so it will not be a perfect stamped image. You cannot expect it to be perfect because the stamp cannot mold itself into those little crevices. So it will not be perfect. If you want perfect, then do it in an area where it is flat. You can add it then like that. So let's see. Let's do the big reveal. And there we have it, still perfect, still working very nicely. Let me show you. Even though it's raised on that side and here, it's still stamped quite nicely, which I truly love. And then I want to add our famous Toxique as well. Tap it to the stamp pad, and then we can add it there which is quite flat, not in frame. There we go. Just keep it there for a little bit. And there we have our stamped image. Now that is awesome. So let's see. I want to add this one and we can add it about there. Now, before we do so, I want to add a little bit more. So I'm going to use some of the Distress Collage Medium. It's matte, but I want to add this on there. And I just want to pull this a little bit apart. Just, I'm going to snip that off there. If I can find my scissors, there we go. So I'm going to put that on top. And let's just see where, maybe there. There's a piece of plastic, where did that come from? All of a sudden, this dry completely clear. So you don't have to worry that something will shine through 
and it shrinks it absolutely shrinks once it's dry so I just want to use my bone folder and just press that in there so that my fingers are not full of glue by the time I'm done there we go that will keep that there and I then want to add I'm just clearing that very fine tip of this collage medium making sure that it is close properly and then I'm going to add glue stick to the stem of this and we can add it to our tag and then we might add another little label somewhere along the line and I think that is perfect so we're just going to hold it for a second or two so that the glue can actually just dry a bit and there we have this beautiful texture on there we can ruffle that up a bit and here even just giving another layer of dimension and interest what else do we want to add here field label field label is always a good choice to add but this time i want it in walnut stain which is a little bit darker than vintage photo and i want it up there now again it's raised on this area it literally is a little bit higher on this end because of the texture base that is this side but just get it to make good contact hold it there for a little bit i move that little label and there we have it still a beautiful stamped image and i think we can call this one done however i do want to add a little bit of a darker ink so i'm going to grab the ground espresso and i'm going to round that off with a ground espresso walnut stain there just doesn't do it for me in this case and we're almost right around the edge going in for the last bitty and there we have it awesome so label number two is done we will look at this in a bitty so right now let's continue with this one i want something orangey red but just to contrast i'm going to add this one i think there now we might as well use some large medium i want field label will not fit in there as it is just too long let's see top seek nope let's get a number in there from the which set is this oh some of them will fall out now because i don't push them in properly field notes field notes once you use them a lot they actually do not fit in properly i find it's almost as if the backing the rubber backing is stretching a bit so vintage photo stamp to the stamp pad to the stamp and i'm going to add the number there just for another layer now the mushroom will move because we didn't glue it down yet not to worry we will just move that one side there we go just putting that stamp back in its set i've got a few stamps that i do not know where they belong because i never put them back with their sets so they're just floating around here in my craft room and there we have it because it's on the texture paste i'm going to just add it there hold it for a little bit just to make sure that it is actually gluing down closing the collage medium and tag number three is done so we will look at those in a little bit so this one this has got a flowery background but it's not an issue i kind of like this tag so i'm going to why do i keep calling and tag this label i'm going to add that on here which will be in contrast with what we have done so far 
with the browns and the oranges, the yellow, and then the orangey yellow or the yellowy orange. I just love the texture of this. It is absolutely amazing. Now, you might say, oh, but it's flowers. Why? How? And what? I love it. I'm going to use. You do. I'm going to use this. You do you. Whatever you like, you can add. I want, I don't know what. Let's see. There's a brown one. Not another number. I don't want another number. Let's see. What do I have there? I've got some postage stamps. I've got some numbers. Let's do number nine, just because we can. This is part of the bits and bobs. Remember I said we will make some. This is part of it. You stamp, ink the edges, and punch it out. So I'm going to not add it there because I want to have it stand out. So I'm going to add this one there. It was done on, it's actually number six. Do you know that? How do I know? Because the text is upside down. So there we go. And we can just simply add that. You can change it to any type number. What do I mean with that? You can add another one to make it a double number. You can put it next to each other, underneath each other, add an angle. So you can really play with whatever. So I'm just going to stick with the one number and then maybe add a few labels. Let's see what we have there. Maybe this is a bit big. I'm going to just add blue to it. This is on truly vintage paper. The paper is as old as I am. It used to be a notebook of my mother who had passed away in the meantime. I'm going to lift this one up and I'm going to add that underneath. If that one lifts up, you can just add a little bit more glue. Remember, I lifted it up because it was upside down. Right, so there we go. I like that already. Now let's see what we can add to this stamped image. Sorry for that noise in your ears. Let's see, something square. That one might fit in there. Not completely, but it doesn't matter. And just attach it to the block. Stamp that to the stamp. Making sure that I've got ink everywhere. It will possibly be over the lines, but I do not mind that. So I'm going to just press down nicely so that I can get a good impression. There we have it. I think it looks perfectly fine. Almost as if that label was made especially for that. So we're building interest on this. And I want something contrast. That looks amazing. I think that is absolutely amazing. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Maybe have another one. Which one will I take? That one. We've got two. I like that one too. This one has got a little piece that needs to be pushed out. There we go. And we can remove that. So let's see. Not green, not brown. Let's look at that. I'll take the little one away. Maybe we need that. So maybe not yet. Let's see. Let's see. This one with the contrast in that. Maybe we can have another one this side. Just for interest sake. Let's see the other one. We don't have to use all of these. I kind of like that. I really truly kind of like that. All right. That's my choice then. Let's just see if we change this one. They are all so pretty. I think that one just to bring in a little bit of that yellow. So there we have it. That is then what I will be using. Just closing this before I bump it over because ay ay ay. Sometimes I can really truly do silly things and without even thinking too much about it. I want to use the, the collage medium just because it's got that fine point and adding the collage medium as glue I'm just putting something on there for a moment 
more collage medium on the next little ephemera piece. And there we have it. Just a tiny little bit of weight there for me helps just to get it tacked down. Oops, I almost made that. And then I want that on the yellow and orange, just for that extra bit of contrast. I think this looks amazing. There we go. So there are our texture based tags, which we have four of. Those two are all part of the mushroom theme. I'm just Manipulating this one a little bit so that it can go flat. And there we have it. All four of them are quite different in their own right, but they still link in with our theme. Now, on to the embossing powder. What do we need for embossing powder? A scrap piece of paper for the embossing powder to get that back into the jar. And we need a heating tool to heat that. Not too powerful because we don't want the powder to blow away. We need some stamps and embossing ink so that we can actually emboss. So we will be using another tag. For that I'll just do one to show you and that will give you some time to practice and play a little bit with that. If you un are unfamiliar with it then when we use it the next time you will remember what we have done and it is not so scary. So let me just clear my table and I will be right back with you. Okay, so on to the heat embossing. Using embossing powder and an embossing stamp pad, which is mostly clear. Um, it is, I can almost say, oil-based. Um, it gives us a little bit of a longer play with that. It doesn't dry as quickly. Because it is this oil base, I'm not sure what it's made of, um, it gives us that longer play, as I said. So I don't have a plan. Previously, we have done the flicking of the water technique, and this was one of those tags that we played with right in the beginning, one of the first few sessions. So I'm going to use this, one of the coffee stamp. I don't know if we will get the coffee dye papers, a plain little tag, and one where I had cleaned um, some surface with a little bit of ink smushing or whatever I had done. So there's not much on there. So I'm going to start with a bit of background stamping before I do the embossing. And I want to do this as quick as possible because I see this video is quite long already. So to get started there, I'm going to, again, just do some stamping on here, maybe directly onto this one as well. Maybe if I'm not, <laughs> not making good progress, I can finish this off camera. So for this one, again, just a little bit of that grunge added. And I love the stamp so much that I will be adding it to all. It really is one of my favorite stamps to use. And it's one of the mixed media stencil and stamp sets. I will link it for you below. So this one may be a little bit there. We can always stamp over it. It's honestly not a big problem. This can just add interest. I want something there. And here I'm using the complete stamp. For this little stamp here, maybe a little bit more there. It looks the same, so I'll turn it over. Maybe something like that and a bit there. That looks a whole lot more interesting than before. And of course, we've got the final one from the other set and we can add that here and there. This one has got a lot of interest now with that bit of ink smushing that went on. Let me just move these tags a tiny bit over and then this one will be in the frame as well. So just a little bit there and there. I think that is enough of the background stamps now. So for, let's see, maybe that one. We can do one part of it like that. So I'm going to add a stamp, maybe a small one, 
just there. Ink pad to the stamp. And I'm going to stamp on this one also. And then just a little bit for dimension, I will be then adding some emboss powder that we will set with the heat tool. So this one I will do the same. And I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'll just add a number or something that I then emboss and set with a heat gun. This one, I want to actually use some of that specimens, um, samples from this field note set, ephemera set. And I'm not going to add another stamp on here, but I do want some background stamping. Have this little stamp, so we'll be adding this to here, and we will add some labels to this one specifically. Maybe this one too. Let's do there one as well. And this one, maybe we can add it there. Just some thinner stamps, making the background so much more interesting. Field label. I will be embossing the, the number specifically. Maybe here and there a tag or something. We will see. I have no plan as of this moment. This little stamp is also a cute one. There we go. Maybe there. Oh, that was the space for the number. Hmm. Maybe should not have put that there. I'll put this one there. Right, I need to now remember. I need to add some number tags. So, I'm going to go ahead first with the little ones. And let's pick a number. There we go. This needs to be with the, with the clear embossing stamp pad. Now this is as old as the mountain self. Quite sticky. Probably not the best anymore. Just want to clear, clean my stamp block a bit. Just wipe it off quickly. Now I know people are using the little anti-static pouches. I am going to use that but just there it gives this white powder. Some people swore by it. Others say it's really not necessary. So adding my little stamp to the block, just making sure that it is in line with a grit and that way I can ensure that it is straight. So just tap it, maybe also just tap the stamp pad to the stamp and it really looks a bit oily. I don't know if you can see the shine on the stamp itself. I'm going to stamp it there and that is what I am going to emboss. Right, so I'm going to go directly over before I carry on, grabbing a piece of paper. What embossing powder did I grab? Mm, gold. So I'm just going to sprinkle this over. Yes, it does matter what embossing powder you're using. If you're using a fine one, it will really be a good. If it is a bit coarser, it will not be a fine there we go. And I'll just put that back into the little pot. That's why we use that sheet. And I have bumped over embossing powder so many times. That's why I go ahead and I close it immediately. So I'm going to grab my heat embossing tool. And I'm going to emboss this. Let's see if it will reach you. It's switched on, so I'm just going to hold this, and I want you to look at the color of that. You can see it's quite grainy, and it will change right before your eyes. I'm using the Ranger Heat Tool. It's quite hot, but it's not that strong that it will blow the embossing powder away. And there we have it. Don't overheat it. It's really not needed. 
and that is it it is done and it is embossed a really beautiful shine to it i don't know if you can see it in the light i will bring it closer there you can see such a beautiful shine to it i will it's now set because it's almost cold i want to do another one there and let's see i think something round um let's do this one making sure that it's not upside down there we go again bringing the stamp pad to the stamp just stepping making sure that it's all over now this is really sticky the sides are sticky it really truly is as old as the mountains now i want to just add the stamp here i'm not using the little anti-static pouch so that we have an idea of what it does or not do. Again, just that sheet. I'm going to use more gold. Maybe I should grab some copper or black. That will be a good. Again, just going to tap it. There we have it. There's a bit of a smudge there. Does it really bother me? No, not completely. There we go. Immediately close this. As I can see, it's just flying all over. Heat gun. You can put it down, hold it. And there it changed. Already it's embossed. It doesn't take a long time for it to be embossed. And there we have it some gold with a brown will be perfect we can just ink the edges and there we have an easy and beautiful tag that was heat embossed with the layers of stamping on it you could have coffee dyed it as well and it would be perfect i just want to add another one maybe on here while this is out same little stamp i think the gold on this brownish tag would look beautiful as it is or it will be contrast and the thread pole is going off so you will probably hear that do this one you turn this out and it's close by and there we have it another tag done with a little bit of gold there just giving a different effect so two tags done so i want to look at this I do want to do some heat embossing on here as well. But for this one, I want a bigger stamp, not the tiny little one. I don't know why, but there's one heck of a noise outside in the street as well. I hope it is not too bothersome. Stamp back to the stamp. I'm going to stamp this here on this side. Just making sure that the stamp is making good contact with the label or the tag. Actually, it's not a label. And before I finish that, I want to add another. I think I want to try this one, which is figure one, two, and three. Again, stamp pad. And let's put that there. So when I pour the embossing powder, we can get it in one shot. So let's see. Don't want to touch too much. Bossing powder. And this time I'm going to sprinkle it there. This ink doesn't dry too quickly. I just want to add it there as well. I think it's more or less in that area. I did an out check. I just poured it over. There we go. And again, we will just pour this back in. Might not get to the others. 
label with embossing powder as this video is really quite long already. Closing that and then it will It's got only one speed, but it is sufficient. And you can see a change in front of your eyes. I just like to move my heat tool around so that it is not focused in one area. And there we have it. Now, this is where I will be stopping with the heat embossing. I will not go on with the other tab. That one can be done at some other time. I just want to continue and finishing off this label. Now we already got that stamp. I also have it from the ephemera set. I will not be using that one. Maybe I can add this, which will be perfect. Maybe also add this one, and then I can add that there. So, going to just add some collage medium to the back. Maybe a little bit more there. It is a perfect glue to use. And I like the fine tip nozzle. Just pressing this down a little bit. Takes them a little so not too long again. I think it will be drying time will be less once the heat is really with us. I'm going to do the same at the back of this label. You can use whatever liquid glue you have. I just grab this one. I sometimes also, well, mostly, let me rather rephrase that. Mostly, there I had a bit of glue, but it dries clear and it also shrinks. So, I've got that. Now, let's see what do we have here. Private collection, specimen. I can maybe add that one there. Also from the ephemera set, field notes, often holds the ideology range. You see, you do have that little bit of leeway to move it about. So there we have that. Let's see which mushroom would really fit on here. Very nicely. Quite cute. I've got a few of that. Let's see. Can't be too long. It will break that. So maybe again, one like this. I think that is beautiful. Then I'm just going to add a few filler stamps, just a few. Just a few filler stamps. There we go, we still want the contrast and showing our technique there. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Oops, flying mushrooms. And maybe we've got that one, I, that, I've got that. Maybe a tiny one. This little one, vintage photo again, which you all know by now I truly love. Maybe add that just to have a bit of harmony with that circle there. There we go. And then from this set, which is our field note set, let me just move that out of the way. I will put that back in the top just in a second or so. Put this back in there. I want something this side. You can see there's a bit of embossing powder that's there. Doesn't bother me. Did come onto there. Honestly, not a problem. We've got that number up there. Let me turn it over then I can probably see so much better. Let's do... Hmm. Let's do this little one. And I'm going to just add it with the fingers, not on a block, just to get a little bit of something else in there. Don't have to add anything. We're just looking for filler stamps at this point. Let's see, I don't want to, to add too many numbers because we've got a number there, space for a number there, there's a number there. We've got that there, that there, and then there's some on there. We also have a date, so we can't add a date on there. Um, what we can, however, add could be from the stamp set. Let's quickly see. Um, fair, no, we can't do fair. 
Oh, we can add a telephone number. Let's do that one. I think that will be cute. And let's add that there. Just a little bit of that. Now, I do want to grab our trusty background stamps and I just want to add a bit of grunge here and there to fill in those areas. That still needs a little bit of something. And let's put a bit over those tags. That other one, another layer. There we go. And there, maybe just one here as well. It looks a little bit more authentic, I believe. And one there. Mmm, that looks awesome, if I may say so myself. So there we have it. We have our little tags done. Heat embossing, now you know how to do heat embossing. I'll just bring this closer. We've got those three with heat embossing. And due to time, I'm not doing the others. And then we have the four tags with, and I have some extras to play with at a later stage, the four completed ones. So now we've got three jumble tags and then four smaller tags. There we have it. This one is a bit flimsy. You can see it's really, really thin. So I might glue it down on something just to make it a little bit more sturdy. Thank you for joining me today. Go try this for yourself and please tag Wawa Crafting on social media. When you do this, I would love to see what your makes are. If you want to see more content like this, please give me a thumbs up. And of course, as always, I'll appreciate you subscribing to my channel too. See you back soon.